What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm gonna to show you how to have scrolling typewriter effect messages in your games in Python using Pygame. All right, so let's get right into it. There's a lot of situations where you could be creating games and you want kind of that uh, Pokemon style of like you approach a character, you trigger something in your code, and then you want a message to show and it kind of does like a typewriter scrolly effect that's sort of like they're talking to you, right? So the text kind of appears one word, one character at a time. There's a really cool, pretty easy way to do that in Pygame uh, using Python. So let's go ahead and get into it. As always, anytime you're using the Pygame module, make sure to import it. Uh, you might have to run pip to install it if you don't have it already. And then go ahead and do pygame.init, just like that. And then a few things we're gonna set up right in the beginning. This should be familiar to anyone who's watched some of the tutorials on the channel before. Setting up a Pygame uh, game, one thing we want to do right in the beginning, especially since this is a tutorial on text, is uh, define a font. And I'm going to use free sans bold .ttf with a font size of 24 just because it's a built-in font. Almost all of you will have it with your installation. Um, and 24 is a good size for visible text but not overpowering. And then we're just going to set up a screen. I'm not going to worry about like defining width and height separately just for this tutorial because we're not playing around with it or anything like that. So just do pygame.display.set mode and then square brackets and just give it a width and a height. I'm going to use 800, 500, just a simple pop-up rectangle. And then we're going to define a timer because we're going to use that as our clock to control the speed, which will then control how many characters show on screen and how fast the next character pops up. Um, and then for now, I'm just going to make a message that's just, uh, we'll show how to kind of cycle through messages at the end of the tutorial, but I'll just say, check out this sweet message. And that'll be the, the message that we use, uh, for this tutorial. And then I'm going to go ahead and say that my snip. So what I show on the screen, well, right in the beginning, we want it to be, um, empty so to do this we'll say font.render and then an empty string and then true and then white and this little snip is what we'll be taking out of the message as we scroll through it so we'll have a counter um, so to start off the counter will be at zero and then we'll have a scroll like a text speed so to start out I'm going to use three and uh, we're just going to keep track of whether or not the full message is done or not. Okay, and so uh, these sort of things are all we have to do in our initial setup. And now everything else is going to be inside of the game loop. So that brings us to the main game loop. And we just want to create a variable that I'll call run. You could call running or active or whatever. And set it equal to true. And then say while run. So now we have a while loop, which is basically an infinite loop until something gets us out of that loop. Um, and so inside of this, we want a screen dot fill and I'm just going to fill with dark gray. This is where you'd put like your game background or your map or whatever. And then timer dot tick at a frame rate. I'm just going to use 60. You could create a frame rate variable. And then I'm going to create kind of a spot for our text to go. So this would be like the inventory or the text bubble or whatever in your game. Um, and I'm just going to make it a black rectangle on the bottom of the screen. So to do that, we're going to give it four arguments. We're going to give it an X and Y start position. 0, 300 is down um, and all the way to the left. And then we'll make it the full width of the screen and then 200. So it'll stretch to the bottom. You don't have to worry about this rectangle too much in what we're doing here. Just know it's a default space to kind of differentiate where I want to put the text. Um, and now let's come down below this and let's handle how to get out of this infinite while loop. So we're going to create some event handling and we want to do for event in pygame.event.get just like this. And then we want to say if event.type is equal to pygame.quit, all caps like that. And if that happens, then we want to set run equal to false. And then we just want to uh, do pygame.display.flip right down here at the end. And then pygame.quit. And so this display.flip is what actually like throws all of our stuff onto the screen so that you can see it. And then pygame.quit outside of the while loop means if somehow run becomes false, then it's time to just quit our application. So uh, that's pretty straightforward. If I boot this up now, what you're gonna see is just a box. So you can see this 
obviously isn't much of a game, but uh, that's okay because I'm here to show you how to do a very specific thing. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to get the text scrolling down here in the bottom part. So whatever your game is, whatever your application is, um, thank you for bearing with me on setting up the basics of Pygame. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we're gonna do this. So we created that variable counter, which is a zero in the beginning, right? Now what I want to do is I want to check and see if the counter is less than speed times the length of our message. Okay, so the message, the length of our message is how many total characters are on the screen. The speed is going to be how long it takes for the next character to get written on the screen. And so this is basically saying, have we written the whole message onto the screen yet or not? And so if we haven't, then we want to add one to the counter. And then we'll do kind of an L if and say L if counter is greater than or equal to the speed times length of message then what we want to do is we want to take our done variable and set it equal to true and uh, this is um, gonna kind of matter more when we have multiple messages and I show you how to cycle through them but let's go ahead and take a look at how to use that counter and that speed to typewrite text so snip equals font dot render and if you remember how we set this up in the beginning snip equals font dot render we just had it as an empty string now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say okay actually take a piece of that message and go from zero so the beginning to the counter floor divided by the speed so floor division basically will uh, divide by a number and round down to the next whole number so you may be thinking something that's a little counterintuitive here is uh, as you increase the speed, you'll actually be slowing down the speed at which the next character um, gets drawn on. So what you could do if it makes more sense to you is you could just do one divided by speed. And this way you'd be getting um, a faster, you'd be getting a faster increase as, um, as your speed were to increase. Um, basically making it an inverse, but uh, I, I'm just gonna leave it this way. And if you have questions about that, just let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm gonna try not to confuse you too much and I'll show what I'm talking about by playing around with the speed once I get this done. So this is basically taking a snip of our message based on how long we've had the thing booted up. And then we're gonna do screen.blit the snip, and so blit is a block transfer, it's actually putting the message on the screen, and we're just gonna blit the snip at 10, 3, 10, so just inside that black rectangle that we created. And what you'll see now as I boot this up should be, check out this sweet message. All right, so that works pretty well, and if I added like, this is more words, like this, um, then, Check out this sweet message. This is more words, okay? I think that's pretty cool. Now let's see what happens if we increase the speed by a lot. So I'm gonna make it 30. What you'll notice is this is gonna slow down a ton because what it's really doing is now every 30 scans, and remember we have 60 FPS, every 30 scans it draws one more character onto the screen. So that actually means it's only doing two characters per second right now. So now let's go the other direction. It was at three. Let's go ahead and take it down to one. So this is gonna be 60 characters per second. And watch how fast this happens. Check out this, we <laughs> see, so the screen recording is so fast that might, uh, or the frame rate is only like 20 FPS. So that might've not even covered the whole thing. So there you go, at two you could see that's really fast. And so three I actually found was a pretty enjoyable speed at 60 FPS. Um, where it's not painfully slow, but it's also not so fast that you can't even keep up. Um, okay, now let's go ahead, and that's obviously the basics. Let's go ahead and do one more cool thing. Let's say we had a list of messages. So instead of message, this is going to be messages. And check out this sweet message. This is more words. Let's go ahead and put a second message in here that is, this is another great message. And then let's go ahead and put one third one in here that's just gonna say, isn't this, oop, isn't backspace apostrophe, this a great tutorial? Maybe like and subscribe? Just like that. It's totally not pandering because it's part of the tutorial. 
All right, so now let's say we have three messages and we wanna add one new variable down here that's gonna be active message. And we'll say we wanna start on zero. We wanna start at the very beginning. Well, what we need to do now is we have to recreate that variable message and set it equal to messages at active message okay so the rest of our code can stay the same but what we're saying now is okay well we're pulling one message out of a list of messages and now we're actually going to use that done variable again so this is pretty cool we're going to come down into our event handling and we'll just say when we're done with a message if we press enter we want to go to the next message okay so let's just add a new event type and say if event.type is equal to pygame dot and now all caps key down then let's say if event dot key is equal to pygame dot k underscore return so that's the enter key um, for a lot of older keyboards the enter key was return so pygames module it still is return but that's the enter key and we'll say and done and let's just check that we're not at the last message. So active message is less than the length of messages. Okay, so this is basically saying the whole message has displayed on the screen. It's not the last message in my list. And I press enter. Well, if that's the case, then what we want to do is we just want to add one to active message like this. And then we want to done equals false. We want to reset that done variable. And then we want to reset the message because you remember we defined that um, we defined that in the outside world. So message is going to be equal to again messages at active message. And then we just want to reset the counter to zero so it knows it needs to restart. And that's all we have to do to cycle through our list of messages. So let's go ahead and check that out. It should look pretty cool. Check out this sweet message. This is more words. Now if I press enter. Bam, it restarts. This is another great message. It is. And let's check out the last one. Isn't this a great tutorial? <laughs> maybe like and subscribe. Um, yeah, maybe like and subscribe to the channel if you're finding this useful, if you're finding it enjoyable. And then if I press enter here, um, it will say list index out of range. So I think what we need to do is say active message is less than the length of messages minus one because the length of messages is going to read two if there are only two things in there. But active message is an index, so it'll go zero and then one. So we actually want it to be less than the length of messages minus one. So that'll fix that. Um, and now if I were to pop in here and just try to get through all the messages, there we go. And if I press enter too early, nothing happens. Isn't this a great tutorial? Maybe like and subscribe. And then if I press enter, nothing happens. So there you go, that's a pretty basic tutorial. You could integrate this into like a world explorer game like a Pokemon or a Zelda style thing. Or you could create a text-based uh, text game or just incorporate this into your other games and apps or menus, anything. The applications are really just up to you and your creativity. I hope you found it useful. If you did, consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel for tons more great content, and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see more of on the channel, what you'd like to see in a future video. As always, good luck with your code, and thanks for watching. Thanks, bye.